Eric July released a video talking about the apolitical nature of Ripaverse. Detractors got upset because they believe Ripaverse is becoming woke and that Eric made this video to shift the narrative. Eric has employees who hold social and political positions that differ from him, but they do not insert their beliefs into the comics. That's the main point Eric makes in his video. Keep politics out, don't lecture readers, and no virtue signaling. But detractors struggle to understand that because they can't fathom potentially woke people keeping their beliefs to themselves, so Ripaverse must be doomed. It's only a matter of time before the ship sinks, according to detractors. They are projecting their own insecurities and lack of business sense onto Eric. How dare Eric expand the company to reach new customers? Why would he focus on growth instead of remaining in a tiny box, selling to the same customers? Haters are incapable of setting their emotions aside and being objective. It's crucial for a CEO to guide public perception of their company and not allow it to be painted as something it is not. That's what Eric is doing now. News outlets labeled Ripaverse as anti-woke. That is not accurate, and Eric corrected the record. It doesn't mean that Ripaverse is woke either. The company doesn't have to fit into one extreme. Comic company that makes comics. That's it. Haters of Eric July have been proven wrong time and time again, stacking L's left and right. They are running out of ideas at the moment, but there is always a new angle of attack that ultimately ends up failing. The majority of stupidity from detractors is concern trolling. Mix in the performative nature of streamers, then it becomes clear that their exaggerated statements and ridiculous conspiracy theories cannot possibly be taken seriously. Streamer talking points are repeated by their viewers with the hopes that the prevailing narrative moves in their favor. But that goal has proven to be difficult because of the awesome Ripaverse supporters who debunk and counter the nonsense. Shout out to Renowned Zero, Bruce, Hail the Lore, Student of God, and everyone else calling out haters. It aggravates them that they can't spread lies and take shots at Eric July and his team without any pushback. So they resort to childish name-calling and labeling Ripaverse as a cult. Eric July is not creating comics for one group of people. There is no pandering to an ideology. Ripaverse is for everyone. It was smart of Eric to avoid his brand being linked to a single community or network. For nearly the past year, we've seen certain individuals who exclusively represent a specific community attacking Eric because he went on his own path. The envy from some comic book creatives is at levels never seen before. In a way, creatives who are politically and socially aligned with Eric are more vicious in their hate than woke leftists. That's ironic considering how insane woke weirdos are. It kind of makes sense because envious artists and writers draw their hatred from within compared to leftists who rely on superficial talking points from their echo chamber. Leftists act like bots, and the envious creatives are bitter and angry. There are parallels in the behavior of both groups, but the motivations are vastly different. The woke want Eric to fail because they despise the way in which he utilizes his platform to speak out against their craziness. The artists and writers want Eric to fail because they feel he is undeserving of success in comics. He has what they want. A great example of a woke detractor is Eric DeBunks. He is obsessed with Eric July and others within his circle of friends and peers, such as Nerdrotic, Heel vs. Babyface, Yellow Flash, and Melanie Mack. Eric DeBunks made 12 videos crying about Eric July in under 4 months. The guy is averaging one video per week on anti-Eric July content. Look at these titles and thumbnails. He uses exaggeration to grab attention and disrupt what he considers is a corrupt algorithm that caters to reactionary type videos. The objective is for his content to be recommended to the same viewers that conservative-leaning YouTubers target, so that he can offer a counter-voice from a woke perspective. An example of an envious comic book creative is Richard Embry. Here is a clip of Richard briefly explaining his detractor origin story. The clip is from a discussion Richard had with a Ripaverse supporter. A lot, a lot of times people agree, you know. So a lot of things I say about Eric July is because I feel he has a big uh, influence. And I'm like, no, nah, that's not true. That's not true. Or that's probably why he thinks that. But that's not true for, for us all, you know. Like when he says something... Uh, when he said creating is the easy part, nah, creating ain't the easy part, man. That's the hard part because you've got to get good at it, you know? Wow. Anyone could do logistics. I could hire someone to teach me logistics. I could hire someone to, to run a warehouse. Warehouse managers are real easy. But to write a good comic book, that takes time. That takes effort, man. That takes passion. That takes talent. That takes 
uh, a lot. You know what I mean? So that's why it's like, bro, don't be telling. Like, I gotta disagree with that. I gotta, I gotta push back on that. You know? And uh, I'm not saying you, but it seemed to me, like from my perspective, any criticism of July, you know, it it, it was like, oh, you, you know, they they want to retweet it, they want to call you a hater, they want to call you a detractor. So you know what I did? I just fucking embraced it. All right, I'll be the detractor. You want me to be the bad guy? You got the bad guy. I'll be it, whatever. Because now you're, you're 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 retweeting it and you're trying to do that. So fuck it, I'll own it. You know. And then uh, you know, the rest is history. You know, he's still making money. I'm 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 doing my comics. I'm having fun. He don't look like he's having fun, but I'm having fun. You know. So, but that's why it's like every once in a while, like uh, I'm not saying always you, but someone like you will come to the, to want to defend it, to to want to defend the Ripperverse. Is that because you feel in a way that you have to, or or what, what what is it? If you are not familiar with Richard or how detractors behave in general, then I understand how you can feel it is unfair to label them as detractors or haters. But what you don't see is the non-stop shots they direct at Eric July and Ripaverse, and the insane amount of nonsense accumulated over a period of time, which is easy to overlook or forget about due to how social media is always about the latest thing. They rely on others forgetting and not paying attention so that they can appear more credible when shifting blame. You're not a friendly, you're a hostile, just like Ripper GoPost is a hostile, just like all Ripperverse fans are hostiles. Is it insecurity, Ripperverse GoPost? Do you think it's insecurity? I think it is. I think that's why you're here too. You refuse to engage honestly, Ripperverse GoPosts. Ripperverse GoPosts in the chat, you need to be reprogrammed, my friend. Uh, I need to deprogram you from the cult that you're in. This is silly. You can't be a part of this. I can't let you. Ripperverse GoPosts, let's debate. Come on over. Fuck Ripaverse goalposts. Fuck all the chuds out there that have anything to say. I will not speak on this ever again. And you can miss me with that bullshit. I'm going to slap you around, Ripaverse goalposts. You guys are the fucking enemy. You guys are the other. I have to take you guys down. Every single one of you.